the sound test room. Hello and welcome to the sound test room. This is part five of my Hack TC11 guide. This is the Hack Attack show. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host. And if you haven't seen the previous four parts of this Hack TC11 guide, then I do suggest that you go watch them. Unless you already know about the performance view, load sharing view, settings view, and patch overview area. This episode is going to be all about controllers. I'm going to explain what types of controllers there are in TC11 and how to use them. TC11 utilizes three different types of controllers. Touch controllers, device motion controllers and module controllers like LFO, HDSR and sequencers. In a previous part of this HackTC11 guide, I chose to skip two menu items inside the utilities menu that you can find in the patch overview area. And those were controllers and triggers. You can use these lists when you want to assign controllers to different things simply by dragging and dropping controllers from these lists. If we look inside here, you can see touch controllers, group controllers, motion controllers, envelope controllers, LFO controllers, table controllers, sequencer controllers and constant. When you add modules, controllers associated to those modules are placed in within these menus right here. So if we check inside the envelope, the AHDSR menu, you can find two types of controllers. AHDSR1, which is a group controller with a big circle, and the AHDSR1 touch controller, three small dots. You can see that these are assignable by this little icon to the side here. So how do we assign controllers? Well, TC11 is a modular synthesizer and right now we have an oscillator going into the amp and straight out to the output. And I want to control the amplitude with the envelope. That means I have to go into amp and simply choose the HDSR. Right now I am controlling the amplitude of the amp with the envelope in touch mode. Because as we know with TC11, when it comes to touch controllers, there are two types, touch and group. So let's begin with the touch type, three dots. I'm not gonna change anything here. And then we go down to the envelope and it's right here. Right now the envelope is assigned to control the amplitude. You need a trigger to actually start and stop a module. By clicking here the trigger menu will pop up and it's the same menu as you have on the side here in the utilities menu. By using the utilities menu here on the side you can actually drag and drop controllers to where you want them and you can also assign controllers by using the list here. Now I've chosen to start this envelope with something called touch began. And if we look in here, we can see that we have two types of touch, as you know it, group and touch. And these two differs and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so let's say we want to control the sustain of the envelope. So we start with the touch type controller and we are going to choose angle and angle to first. Now when I put down one finger, it sounds like that. Now I add another finger. Right now we are controlling the sustain of the envelope with a angle to first controller. So this is the first finger and the second one will set the angle. By moving my finger away from it, the animation will get bigger. And as you can hear, I am now controlling the sustain. Now on to the next type of controller, the group controller. So what happens when we use a group touch instead? Let's go to the sustain, open up the menu, go back, go back, to controllers and choose group angle and here it says total angle to first which means we need more fingers back in the performance view I put down one finger and then I put a second one 
as you can see, it changes the animation of the circle, but the sound doesn't get louder. Why? Because we're using a group controller. That means more fingers. And I do love fingering my surfaces. Now watch as I put down three fingers. The touches gets added up. So that's the big difference between group controllers and touch controllers. The group controllers sums up all of these touches and sets a global value. Now there are more parameters in here and I will get deep into them in future videos where I'm doing patch design. Right now I just want to show you how controllers work and how to assign them. Let's add a device motion controller. Let's say I want to be able to control the pitch of the oscillator when I roll my iPad. We double tap to get into the oscillator and we go to the note area and then we choose motion, gyroscope roll and roll. Now rolling the iPad will control what notes are played. And as soon as we're using that type of controller, we see this shape popping up on the screen. It's a graphical representation of the position of the roll. Now for the purpose of showing you what happens when we're using the gyroscope to control the note of the oscillator, I'm gonna increase the range and you'll be able to hear it. One thing to add, when the iPad's orientation is reset, gyroscope controllers will output their minimum value. As the device is rotated, controller values will increase in either direction around their axis until they reach the extremity of that movement. But let's make it even more crazy. Let's change the type of controller to an accelerometer controller. Let's use Accelerometer X. And as soon as you do that, this graphic will pop up and it will show you that you're moving the iPad. Now we chose the X Accelerometer controller. So by shaking the iPad in the X position and playing at the same time, you will hear the notes change. That's all for this part of the Hack TC11 guide. In the next part, I will go into the synth objects and explain a few of them. After that is done, I will go into some serious patch creation where I will show you some different patches you can create with TC11. Please subscribe to my channel, comment down below. As usual, Doug Woods, Colin Sweeney and me, Jakob Huck, at thesoundtestroom.com wishes you a very productive week. Now go finger something. Mm.